If you're new to DaVinci Resolve or maybe you're just having some playback issues when it comes to editing, I'm going to show you exactly how to set up your project and all the other settings needed to have a smooth playback experience when editing within DaVinci Resolve. When you first open up DaVinci Resolve, you're going to navigate over to the bottom right corner to this gear icon. And what this will do is pop up your project settings. Within this timeline format, that's exactly what the final video is going to look like. There's this other section for video monitoring, which is actually what you're seeing whenever you're playing back. I like to keep mine at 720 and 24 frames per second or, 17, or 720, 30, whichever your frame rate is. This will just reduce the resolution of the video itself whenever you're playing it back so that it will run faster because you're using a lower resolution video. Another thing you can do is switch this from 10-bit to 8-bit color. Optimized media and render cache, these are two different things. The optimized media is just pretty much making separate video clips to use in place of the video clips that are the original clips you're using. So if you're someone that shoots in H.264, which is MP4, or H.265, like MOV videos, then it's a lot harder for the computer usually to decode these types of formats. So if you make a proxy or an optimized media version in a different format, then it's going to allow for faster editing. One thing to keep in mind though, is if you go this route, you are duplicating your files. So you need to know exactly where you want to put these. And also if you have enough space on your computer or hard drive or whatever you're using so that you have enough room for all the video clips. Proxy media resolution. This is going to be like your 1920 by 1080. Uh, I usually like to leave this around original only because you don't have to worry about any scaling issues that might happen. If you are someone that likes to cut with your with scaling or animate your scaling on videos. Proxy media format. Now this is gonna be different depending if you're on a Windows or a Mac. On a Mac, you're gonna see options for Apple ProRes. And those are the ones that are native to the computer and it's easier for it to read, especially with the GPU or if you're on a new Mac computer, your M1s. So on a Windows computer, there is a DNxHR. And the difference between each of these is the ones at the top has higher resolution and the ones at the bottom are lower resolution. And I usually just go for LB, which is the lowest <laughs> option that they have, just so that it's a smaller file size, so it's easier to read. And then same can be said for your optimized media. Now, I'll be honest, optimized media and proxy media, there isn't really a whole lot of explanation of the difference between the two. So if you are someone out there that knows a little bit more about the optimized media versus proxy media, let me know in the comment section so we can learn together about this. <laughs> to make that proxy or optimized media, it's really easy to do. All you do is go and select the footage that you want to make proxy or optimized media, and you right click on it and go down to generate proxy media, or if you want to use optimized media, generate optimized media. And then you'll sit and wait for it to load. Keep in mind, you can't do anything else while this is going on. It's why I don't really do it unless if it's a certain project that calls for that, just because you're gonna be sitting there and letting the computer run and make proxies and it'll take a while, especially if it's a bigger file size or you don't have that fast of a computer. Now we're on to the render cache format. Render cache is separate. It's not making another video clip that you will be replacing. It's actually caching out the video. So think about render cache as a buffering. So it's the amount of the video that's been loaded up so that's pre-rendered into the system. That way it's easier for playback. For this one, I do go with a lower resolution just like I would with a proxy. I like to enable background caching for after one second. That way the second that you stop touching your keyboard or mouse, it will start loading up more of that render cache so that you will have a faster playback and then just makes everything faster and a lot smoother for you to edit. I also like to check automatic cache transitions in user mode and automatically cache composites in user mode and automatically cache fusion effects in user mode. So your transitions, your composites, and your fusion effects are all separate from the video itself. It's different things that the computer uses, so I like to just keep those cached so it just loads everything. We're on to the working folders. This is where your proxy generation location, your cache files location, and your gallery stills location is going to be at. We need to adjust the preferences within DaVinci Resolve. To do that, click DaVinci Resolve and Preferences. Within here, you have memory and GPU. This is very, very important. Unlike Premiere Pro, 
DaVinci Resolve is more GPU based than CPU based. If you have multiple GPUs, you can check them all here or have it select automatically. Same with GPU processing mode, CUDA or OpenCL. Use CUDA if you have NVIDIA. If you have AMD, go with OpenCL. You can also click auto if you have multiple GPUs of different brands. Memory configuration. This is the RAM that's in your computer and how much you're going to allow DaVinci to use. Since I only really use DaVinci by itself and not other programs, I just give it all the memory that I can. I just max it out. So you have it for both Resolve itself and for Fusion. And you'll notice if I give Fusion less, I can't give Resolve itself anymore. So it's split between the two. Decode options. You want to make sure that you have Decode H.264 and H.265 using hardware acceleration on. If you have an NVIDIA card, click that to make sure it's using that. That is for any footage that you use shot with a phone or an action camera like a GoPro. It'll make it easier to decode the video format so that it's easier to play back. From system, we'll move over to user. Within the UI settings, I like to click on stop playback when a dropped frame is detected. I keep this checked because it'll just stop the video playback instead of just trying to catch up and it buffers and it's just all weird looking with the cache. I click that just to stop it all so it's less annoying whenever you're editing. Playback settings, you can hide UI overlays and also minimize the interface updates during playback. This is just all the stuff that's around the video within the editor. It'll just make that part go a little bit slower while the video itself is playing back. And then performance mode, you can go automatic, manual, or disable. Obviously, if you want to go automatic, you can, just does it all itself or manual and then just click on optimize sizing, decode quality, and image processing. Save. Preferences updated. You do have to restart Resolve for these to take effect. Now the last bit of settings, we're gonna go up to playback. We have proxy handling, which if you have any proxies made, you'll enable those. Uh, timeline proxy resolution. You don't have to have proxies for it to go into proxy resolution, which can be kind of confusing, honestly, with the terminology they're using here, but it's essentially just the quality of the video playback. You can have it play a full quality, half quality, or quarter quality. And of course, going with each, it's going to lower the resolution, so it's gonna get a lot more pixelated. But I tend to go with just half quality. If I'm noticing really bad playback, I'll go to quarter quality. Render cache. You can choose this to be smart or user. I tend to go with smart just because I'm not always editing the craziest stuff. Now, if I am, I'll go with user and just manually set everything that I want to be caching. And fusion memory cache, we can just click that on, on. To see the render process in action, this is exactly what you need to do. Click on the video within the timeline that you want to cache, right click it, come up to render cache fusion output. It's on auto, we'll go ahead and just click on just to make sure that it's going to work and you'll see this red bar come across. The red bar means that it hasn't cached yet. You're gonna wait for it to be blue. There it goes. Now that it's blue, we'll have a smooth playback. Go over here where it's red, and it goes a little bit choppier because it hasn't finished. There. But because we had checked it to stop whenever it starts becoming choppy. It automatically stops the playback and it just makes it a little bit easier, you know, a little bit happier to use. Do keep in mind if you make any sort of cuts, if you resize, position, adjust color on any of these clips, you're going to have to wait for it to recache again, which can kind of be a bit of a hassle. Speaking of color, you can actually cache the nodes in your color editor. This is great, especially if you're working within effects on individual nodes. To do this, right click on the node, go down to node cache and on, and you'll see it go from red to blue, then you know that it's fully cached. That way you can go back and do whatever else you want and that particular node for the color is always cached so it doesn't have to recache that particular node. Sometimes the stuff you're editing, you don't really need to see the color all the time or maybe certain effects, you don't need to look at them while you're in the middle of the edit. You can turn those off. You can do it for everything by going up here and clicking on the bypass. Now, maybe you want just the color or just the effects. You can easily do that by right clicking on it and just have it be just the effects 
or just the color. And you can turn just that on and off. That's how I optimize DaVinci Resolve for a better editing experience.